Welcome to our eighth Orchard Talk in the series about best practices guidelines for the Heritage Apricot Orchard. The orchard is located next to the Los Altos History Museum, where we strive to inspire our community to care for our city landmarks. Our topic is soil enhancement. Soil is full of living organisms. So why do we care for the soil in our orchard? Well, the key to healthy trees is healthy root systems. This builds resistance to pathogens and all those living organisms in the soil help to release the organic nutrients that feed the trees. The soil also acts like a sponge, absorbing moisture and holding it and then releasing it slowly over time. So our heritage orchard has been cultivated for nearly 120 years. So naturally, the nutrients in the soil become depleted. And our city orchardist adds nutrients in the form of fertilizer, just within the drip line of each tree. So the drip line is the edge of the, um, of the leaf canopy, and the roots generally extend out that far from the trunk of the tree. So this happens twice during the year, during the spring, and then again in the fall, and it's timed with rain or irrigation so that the water helps those nutrients percolate down into the root system and minimizes runoff. What can our city orchardists do to care for the soil? Well, to protect the water, uh, the quality of water that runs off into our bay, he minimizes the use of fertilizer. And ideally, based on soil sample tests, um, he also pays attention to what the labels on the fertilizer uh, uh, say is, is healthy. Currently, he adds organic nutrients uh, to the, from the cover crop. So you see all this nice green cover crop here has been tilled into the soil. So he, um, he mulches and then tills it. And he's considering um, some enhancements like adding charcoal products. But when he tills, it also breaks the surface, allowing the water to penetrate down into, into, the, um, into the soil and into the root systems. So tilling is done with a disc that attaches to the back of the tractor. Bill does this when the cover crop needs to be folded into the soil with the benefits of adding carbon to the soil. And the timing depends on when it is dry enough to get the tractor into the orchard, but also wet enough so that it kind of minimizes the amount of dust. What are some of the considerations and the constraints associated with caring for the soil? Well, soils in the orchard are patchy. Some areas are clay, some areas are, are sandy. There's a trade-off with the cover crop. So aesthetically, I love the mustard, the yellow mustard flowers. However, those plants need to be tilled in before they get too tall and, and woody. Also, when the, um, when the soil needs treatment, sometimes it's too wet or too dry to get the tractor into the orchard. Another concern is, is stormwater runoff. So we've got two stormwater drains on San Antonio that go directly into San Francisco Bay. And concerns at other agricultural sites are associated with fertilizer runoff um, and, and, uh, and silt runoff. And um, so I think that's minimal really with our orchard, but it's something that we need to talk about and consider. What does the future hold for the care of our soil? Well, there are many suggestions under discussion um, within the Orchard Commons Committee. One idea is to establish a beneficial plant guild that would build healthy root systems favorable to living organisms. Uh, the idea is to reduce the need for tilling. And um, within the circles of regenerative agriculture, there's a lot to be discussed in terms of the pros and cons of no-till at each site. Um, charcoal additives might be a way of getting more carbon into the soil. Also, the issue of stormwater runoff could be addressed um, by a demonstration swale garden along the sidewalk 
adjacent to San Antonio there. And that could be, um, have the purpose of educating our citizens about green infrastructure to maintain water quality. Still a lot to discuss in support of the decisions of our city orchardists. So what did our original orchardists do to build up the soil? Well, I hear stories that Jay Gilbert Smith experimented with fava beans as a cover crop. And so, of course, this would add nutrients to the soil. Beans are good for that kind of thing and also would shade out the weeds. But you know, I never heard the end of that story. I don't know what he decided, whether it was a good thing or not. Another historical note that's of interest is that mustard cover crop was actually introduced by the Spanish missionaries. And so they were the first innovators in Silicon Valley. They were looking at what types of fruits would uh, grow the best in our um, Santa Clara Valley. So I'd love to hear from you. Please contact me, Jane Packard. Send me your suggestions, your uh, questions. I can be reached at the Los Altos History Museum. And that email address is easy. Hello at losaltoshistory.org. Thanks, and I hope to hear from you.